Welcome to a solution video for the 2019 FRQ AP Statistics exam, question number three. It's a good one that deals with a two-way table and a bunch of really cool probability questions. And it's actually quite an easy one as well. So let's just dive right into it. A medical researcher surveyed a large group of men and women about whether they take medicine as prescribed. The responses were categorized as never, sometimes, or always. The relative frequency of each category is shown in the table. So here we have a two-way table. We have men and women on the left side, and then across the top we have how they take their prescription. Do they take it as prescribed always, which is a good thing, sometimes, or never, which would be a bad thing. Now the cool thing about this two-way table, it might be different than a two-way table we've ever seen before, is it doesn't have counts in it. They never at any point tell us the actual size of the sample. For example, we see here in the bottom right that basically 100% of people were in the sample were accounted for. All 100% of people in the sample were in the sample. Then instead of showing counts, we actually see proportions. So we see that 47% of the people in the survey were men, where 53% were women, 54% said always, take their prescription as, as, as prescribed, 34% sometimes, and 12% never. And then the numbers inside would be and, you know, for example, um, 5.64% of men, so, so of the people in the survey, 5.64% um, were men who never take their medication as prescribed. Okay, you get the point. So they ask us three different questions, part A, part B, part C, but question A has three parts in itself. So let's dive right into those three parts. We'll look at them one at a time. So part A says a person from this survey will be selected at random the first part says, what is the probability that the selected person will, who, uh, will be someone who responds, boy, I'm having a hard time reading today. What is the probability that the person selected will be someone whose response is never and is a woman? So never and a woman. So all we got to do is basically cross those two things. So never and woman would be right there. There it is. That would be the and, 0. 0.0636, never and woman. So of all the people in the survey, which we don't even know how many that is, but we do know that the proportion of them that are both never taking their prescription as they're told and they're a woman is 6.36%. Very, very simple. All right, the second part to part A says, what is the probability that the person selected will be someone whose response is never or is a woman? So this is where we're actually crossing two different things. We're looking at they never take their prescription as prescribed, or they are a woman, which would be all of this row right here. So this is a little bit tricky. Sorry that that line kind of got messed up there. This is a little bit tricky because this is an or. So hopefully you know the formula for or. The formula for or is, the, let's just kind of write it generically first. So the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And I'm going to explain why, why I'm doing the problem, why we subtract the and. So in this case, we're going to start off with never. 12% of people never take their prescription as they should. So that's right here. Then we're going to add in the percentage of women. 53% are of all the respondents were women. So that is the number we have right here. But the problem is some of those people got double counted. And that would be the overlap. That would be the and. 6.36% of respondents were both never taking their prescription as prescribed and they were women. Now, the problem is that we don't want them to be double counted. Part of this 12% right here is that 6.36%. Part of this 53% is that 6.36%. So we subtract the and away, not to get rid of those people who are both, but to prevent them from being counted twice. Because again, part of the 12% that I have right here are the 6.36% that are also women. Part of the 53% right here are also never taking the prescription as they're supposed to. So that is why we have to subtract away the and, not to get rid of, but to prevent them from being double counted. So 0.12 plus 0.53 minus 0.0636 gives us our total probability for never or woman here. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Um, or probability for some people could be a little bit tricky, but if you use the formula that is given to you on the AP Stats Formula Sheet, it's actually pretty simple, especially when you could literally see the overlap in one of these two-way two tables. 
All right, the next question says, what is the probability that the person selected will be someone whose response is never given that the person is a woman? The key word there is given. That means that we have a conditional probability. Conditional probability could also be a little bit tricky, so let's walk through this carefully. Now, the question literally says, what is the probability that the person selected will be someone whose response is never? So we are trying to find the probability that somebody responds never. But the given is what we put after this line. So this line right here is, is read as given. So this is saying, hey, we're only wanting to look at the probability of the responders who said never, but it has to be given, it has to be true that they are female or that they're women. So we do have a formula for this. There is a formula for conditional probability. I'm going to write it up here generically. It is the probability of A on the condition of B is equal to the probability of both A and B on top divided by the probability of your condition alone on the denominator. So breaking this up for this specific problem, that means on top goes the probability um, that the person is never taking their prescription as prescribed and they're a female. And the denominator would be the probability of the condition alone, and that is the probability that they are a female. All right, so put all this together, and we're going to get our final answer. So the numerator goes both. So we actually already found that out earlier. Right there is the probability that a person selected is both a woman and never takes her medicine as prescribed. That's the point 0.0636. And the probability that a woman is selected just without anything else, just, just purely the probability that a woman gets selected is 0.53. So there is our math that we're going to do to get our answer. Grab a calculator, divide, and you get the final answer of 0.12. Pretty easy. But the most important thing is that you first recognize that this is a conditional probability because we have that given. Given basically limits who you're allowed to look at. We're only allowed to look at the woman, which is why the probability that a woman is selected becomes my denominator, because it means I'm not allowed to look at any of the data that includes a man, only the women. So this is how we do that mathematically. Pretty simple. But again, you got to recognize that we're working with the conditional probability first. All right, now moving on to part B. For the people surveyed are the events of being a person whose response is never, and being a woman, independent. Now, statistically, we do have a really simple way to prove independence. If the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B, then we could prove that, that A and B are independent if this equality is truly equal. So the question kind of already has us set up to answer this question pretty nicely. So now, the A and the B could be anything you want. So the two things in question, based on the way this problem is worded, is responding never and being a woman. So one of them has to be A, one of them has to be B. So you can actually do the problem two different ways. So the first way that I have shown here is we started off with never as the A. So we're finding the probability that you never take your medicine as prescribed, given that you are a female. And we're checking, is that equal to the probability of never taking your prescription as prescribed. So whatever you put as the A has to go in front, basically. So if I'm going to go with negative, uh, never here, then i got to go with never here as well. So on the left-hand side, well, we actually already figured that out. It was the previous problem. I'm just going to walk through it one more time. And the numerator goes both, never and woman. That's the point 0636. The denominator goes just the condition, the probability of being a female. That's 0.53. And if we divide that, we get 0.12. Okay, but to check if we have independence, we now have to compare that to the probability of never taking your medicine as prescribed. Who cares? Male, female, doesn't even matter. Just the probability you never take your medicine as prescribed. And if we look at the table, that is right here. The probability that somebody never takes their medicine as prescribed is 0.12. So basically, we get that both of these are the same, the same probability. So if we are picking a respondent at random, there's a 12% chance that they never take their medicine as prescribed. But if they're a female, there's also a 12% chance they never take their prescription as prescribed, which means that being a female didn't make you more or less likely to never take your medicine. You got a 12% chance to never take your medicine, whether you're a female or a male, it doesn't even matter, who cares? So that's what actually tells us that these are in fact independent. So yes, they are independent because both probabilities here equal 12%. 
Now, I do want to emphasize that you could switch around who's your A and your B. You are allowed to do whatever you want. So if I'm going to switch around and have the never be the B and the woman be the A, I do have to write this differently. Now I'm going to look at the probability of a woman being selected. And I'm going to check and see, is that equal to the probability of a woman being selected given that they never take their medicine as prescribed? So the first one on the left is pretty easy. The probability that a woman is selected is pretty simple, 0.53. And I'm going to compare that to the right-hand side. Now, this is conditional. So once again, I've got to follow the conditional formula. The numerator goes woman and never, which we already figured out several times. That's the 0.0636. The denominator is never taking your medication, which is 0.12. Okay, easy. Now, all you got to do is grab a calculator and divide this out. And guess what you get? 53%. So we once again see that these two things are equal, which tells us that we do have independence. So there's a 53% chance that a person out of this survey is picked and that they are a female. But if they, if we limit ourselves to only those that never follow their medicine as prescribed, then 53% of those people are women as well. So it just goes to show that never taking your prescription doesn't impact or change the probability of a woman being selected. Either way you look at it, either way you call who's A, who's B, you still get equality, which proves that we do have independence. All right, final question says, assume that in a large population, the probability that a person will always take medicine as prescribed is 54%. So we're assuming that not only is this 54% true for the people in our survey, but it's true for even a larger, larger population. If five people were selected at random from the population, what is the probability that at least four of the people will always take the medication as prescribed? So if we look at five people, and we say, all right, X is the random variable that you take your medication as prescribed. You always take your medication as prescribed. Well, out of those five people, zero could say always, one could say always, two could say always, three could say always, four could say always, or all five could say always. You're only looking at a sample of five people. So unfortunately, you cannot have six people say always if you only have five people. And they want me to find the probability that at least four of them always take their medication as prescribed. Now, at least four means four or more. So we're trying to find the probability that out of five people, four or five of them always follow their medicine's um, directions or, you know, always take their medicine as pres prescribed. So this does turn into a binomial distribution where X is the number of people in the sample of five that always take their medicine. That's what I kind of set up here. And the sample size is five and the probability of success is 0.54, which means the probability that they don't take their medication as prescribed would be 0.46. That would be sometimes or never. Again, anything other than taking it as prescribed. Now, just real quick to make sure that we do believe that this is in fact binomial, we are given our size, which is five. We are given the probability of success, which is 54%. The, um, each trial should be independent. What happens to one person should not impact the next. The probability of success, the 54% must stay the same. And if we're in a large population, that should be true. Now, technically, we're taking people out, and, but we say as long as our sample size, which is five, is under 10% of the population, we're fine to assume independence. So we are allowed to proceed with the binomial model here. Now, here's how the binomial model works. We are looking for four or five. So it makes more sense to actually do the work for those two calculations, add them together to get the answer. So five choose four. That's going to be this first part right here. And this is trying to find the probability that four out of the five. That's four people follow the 54% success of always taking their medication. And one person does not. That's where all that came from. Then I'm going to do the same thing with five choose five. Five people, all five of them follow the medication as they're supposed to, 54%. None of them follow it incorrectly. That would be 0 0.46 to the zero. Now, the cool thing is how to actually get these numbers on your calculator. One thing you could do if you know how to work, use your calculator at TID4 very well is what we call a binomial CDF or PDF. So if you had second VARs, uh, it's actually faster if you go up a little bit. We have binomial PDF. Now, here's how this works. All you got to do is type in the number of trials, 5. Then you got to type in the probability of success, 0.54. And then X is how many you're looking for. So if I'm looking for 4 out of 5 successes, 4 out of 5 people that always take their medication as prescribed, this will tell me that probability, which is the 0.1956 or 19557. Kept a couple extra more decimals that we got right there. Actually, let me use a different color here. 
I'll use the blue just showing that that is what I have outlined in blue there. All right, then we're going to go ahead and calculate five, choose five. So once again, second vars, go up to binomial PDF. Uh, whoop, I grabbed the wrong one. I'm so sorry. I always do that on this thing. It's really touchy here. Binomial PDF, there it is. And five trials, probability of successfully taking your medication as prescribed, 54%. And this time I'm looking for five. This just helps me do the math faster. That way I don't have to worry about doing too much math. So 0 0.04592, that's what I got right there. Add those two numbers together and you'll get your grand total for the probability of at least four out of five people taking their med medication as prescribed. So pretty simple there to follow the rules for the binomial distribution. Hopefully you had a good teacher that explained, you know, what all of this stuff is and how it all comes together. And if you don't, I got plenty more videos that you could watch that really dive into the binomial and the geometric model as well. But that's how to find the answers to this problem. Overall, not too bad. I think part A and part B are pretty simple. Part C can be a little bit tricky if you don't understand the binomial model. But hey, on the AP test, if you can get a couple points on each FRQ, you're doing really good. All right, that's it for this video. See you in the next one.